To make our laser power measurement, we're going to need this device, the Mahoney Laser Power Pro. Now this one I've got has been specifically made for CO2 and YAG lasers, and I've purchased one which has a scale up to 100 watts, which will be ample for the 50 watt machine I'm going to measure on. Now the way it works is you have this target area where you shine the laser onto, and what it is is a thermopile which collects all the energy that you're shining onto it and then it represents it as a value in watts on the front. Now when you buy it you'll get a calibration certificate which tells you exactly how long you need to expose the laser onto the target for and in the case of mine they engraved it on the back and 38 seconds is how long I need to shine the laser on this for. Now the only problem with that is that 38 seconds is a lot longer than I can automatically program my controller for, so I manually have to press the button down and use a stopwatch. But I've found from previous measurements that doing that, you can get a repeatable measurement within about you know half a watt each time, so it's not too bad. Now one last thing before we can use this is that on the back it has a screw and they'll provide you with the right size spanner. And what you need is this screw for is to reset the needle to zero for your ambient temperature of the room and then you're all ready to go. One other thing too is that I highly recommend you get one of these magnetic bases and I 3D printed a little holder here to put it on because once you've got all this screwed and attached you can put it in any position you need and then you've got both your hands free to go off and make your measurement with. Now over on the laser, we have the certificate from the manufacturer which tells us that the agreement power is 45 watts. So over here, I've set the probe up directly in front of the laser and by setting the control panel to 98% power, I'm gonna measure and find out really what we're getting from it. Now the laser's off, but over the next roughly 10 seconds, the needle will still go up and reach a peak point. And the peak seems to be sitting at an output power of about 36 watts. And that's exactly the same thing I measured when I did the test about a month ago as well. Now if you want to wait for it to cool down by itself, it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes for the needle to get to zero. So in order to speed it up, you can just put it under some running water and that'll get the needle moving down faster. But uh, what you want to take care of is that you pull it out of the water before it hits zero because you don't want to overshoot. Because what happens is if you uh, overshoot the mark, you have to wait for it to actually warm back up to zero to room temperature again. You can't just reset it because then your next measurements will be off. So after making that first measurement, I went and made another two. One at this position after the first mirror and one at this position here after the second mirror because what I wanted to do was see if there was any noticeable power losses at reflection. And what I found was there was no change in the power, so that's a good sign. That means I'm reflecting close enough to 100%. So what I'm gonna do is make my next series of measurements at this position, because it's the most convenient place to put it. And what I'm gonna do is make a series of measurements starting from full power at 98% and going down at various stages to about one or 2% where I'm still getting a little bit of power and I'm going to plot a curve to see what the profile is like. Then at the same time I'm going to take note of what the current draw on the laser is too with this ammeter that I've uh, connected up and that will give me a bit more information about the performance of the laser tube. This is the data I collected by taking a measurement at various power level settings. Now I only took one measurement at each setting, but I'm sure if I repeated, the line would uh, flatten out a bit more. And what we'd see is a linear increase in actual output power to measured power 
up into around an inflection point here at around 80% power where it flattens out so it doesn't matter what I input higher than 80 it's just going to put out the maximum power of around 36 watts so that's the most important bit of information for me to find out here because uh, I know that if I want to maintain the length of my laser tube well I should never set it higher than 80 because at 80 I'm only putting 14 milliamps of current through the tube whereas if I increase the power level setting up to say 90 to 98 I'm putting around 18 to 19 milliamps in which has given it a lot more strain on the tube for no actual power gains so it is a bit concerning that 36 watts is all I'm getting out of what's quoted as a 50 watt machine but that's the kind of thing you factor in when you're buying stuff from the Chinese off eBay uh, these measurements are taken from a tube that has been under a fair bit of operation for six months so to make a fair assessment I'll have to wait until I have to replace the tube and I'll take fresh measurements and see how it deteriorates over time but the good thing I've seen from here anyway is that okay I know I'm getting only 36 watts and if you see some of my other videos or some of the things I'm doing on my website 36 watts you can actually get a, you know a fair bit of work out of that so if I do get a better tube that really does give me 45 to 50 watts that's going to uh, expand the work I can do greatly